so that this next thing I read is a kind of a, what do you call it? It's a, you know, like Animal House? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, not parody, it's a... Is that a satire? Huh? Well, yeah, I guess. I gotta tell you, there's no privacy in a fish camp. Harlan Bailey said that one. <laughs> My dad was frustrated, a funny little exclamation would fly out of his mouth. Shit house mouse. <laughs> Until I saw this legendary creature, I thought that this was a funny little rhyme without basis in reality. And my father's family was very poor. They lived in a rural part of America where the sun had not yet risen on the 20th century. There was no shortage of outhouses in his childhood. I suppose people used to sit out there and watch the wildlife. Kagiyan. The, the, the Quijack River is a remote Alaskan location. We are part of a group of 100 set fishers, set net fishers, camped in Ghost Town, Canyon. <laughs> that's not it. That's Bobby, that's Bobby Gallimore's boat. I'll tell you about that one later. In the fish camp, we eat fresh salmon, drink a lot of rainwater, and we own, we own outhouses. The drill is to fill the hole and move the outhouse as needs be. After a while, the structure wears out, the roof begins to leak. The door falls off. Time to build a new sanitary facility. Two years ago, we implemented this necessary home improvement. I shipped the lumber from Seattle on Northland Services Ocean Going Barge. We planned and cut the structure at my place in Nene. We bought the materials at Cognion by Skiff. We assembled our wonderful new remodeled bathroom over a fresh hole. I was filled with pride and ownership. <laughs> Every day I would inspect my new asset. I checked, I checked for vandalism and disrespectful use. I was on guard against usurpation. I was ready to defend against hostile takeover. <laughs> this is no joke. <laughs> that occasionally drunken crew down the path, too stupid and lazy to build our own structure, would not be allowed to follow my nest. They're like some kind of a jay or a sparrow. It steals another jerk bird's nest by forcing the eggs out. I would not force them to suffer them. I would not suffer them to enjoy the comfort and privacy that I, by way of my foresight and industry, had provided for my crew. I went over to their camp to lay down the law. The green horns, the green horns were washing their dishes in a rubber made tote. The lukewarm wash water was milky and sort of chunky. So if you ever eat with them, bring your own silverware. <laughs> Every day, I would look down the hall to inspect the state of its content. My interest did not spring from some deviant, deviant aspect of brain wiring. Physicians do this all the time. What if I found my tools or silverware in there? <laughs> I would not redeem these prizes, but I want to know what people are doing in private. What if I found empty whiskey bottles, or disposable syringes, or an empty morphine sulfate bottle from Dad's time in hospice? Yeah, such discoveries would require good judgment and effective action on my part. Furthermore, if the crew has a good diet, and the cooking gear is washed and rinsed in hot water, the deposits should form a mountain, a peak mountain, built from reasonably good construction materials. It can carry stresses posed by the weight of these structures, Kind of olfactory tower of Babel that I will be forced to bury when it becomes unruly. One day during the morning inspection, looking down upon my kingdom, I saw a movement. A little mouse scurried in and out of the den he had made in the brown mountain. I thought about the things my father had told me, how the past what it could reveal in the present. I thought about that mouse. Did I skip something here? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I heard about the mouse, but I didn't skip it. Mm -hmm. my, my brain is ratcheting. I thought about that mouse. Did he choose to live in that decaying neighborhood? Or was he forced to live there due to socioeconomic circumstances? <laughs> was he sickly from eating nothing but processed food? <laughs> Would he ever find a female mouse? who would share this stifling existence with him. 
we had dug the hole and compacted sand its walls were perpendicular. Maybe he fell in and was imprisoned like an ant in a sand land trap, like a person in a brutal political landscape. Like somebody trying to figure out what to do in the election now, right? I just threw that. <laughs> uh, okay. I should have implemented his escape at that time. A simple piece of rope would have sufficed. During morning inspection, during the next morning inspection, I'm horrified to find a flood of diarrhea at the bottom of my outhouse. The terrain formed in relative time, destroyed by flood and landscape slide. I would be concerned with this emanator for my crew, but I know that it didn't. Immediately, I throw a lock on the door of my facility. Twenty minutes after I lock our outhouse, one of their crew goes, one of the feckless crew goes into their old broken down latrine, the one they didn't build, the one they must use at night because I never see them there in daylight, the one without a door, the one thirty yards from the front window of our cabin, where we are sitting having breakfast. He lays out his evacuation supplies, begins to spray air fresher into the wind, Coats himself with mosquito repellents, pulls his pants down and sits. He's facing us. He looks over to us, smiles and waves. He has some voice, some composure. The next day I hear an intense shouting argument down the path, a furious argument. Party one asserts that they have prior claim on the outhouse and used by party two. The basis of their claim is that the party is that party two built the facility when they were in the employ of party one's deceased father. It's a fool's errand. The Magpie crew is attempting to take possession of a structure which is 20 years old and itself in need of de demolition. Well, that's Alaska, folks. So excited to be here. So goddamn happy to leave. Yeah. <laughs> that's life in a village. That's my job as a captain of a set net crew. This morning, this morning we lost the key to the latrine. It took a half, frantic half hour to find it. Did I mention that we locked it? Oh, yeah. 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 Six months after I write this, I read it to a friend. He whips out his iPhone and went to Urban Dictionary and got this. An incomprehensibly crazy person. As in, crazy as a shit house mouse. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying from the country. Yeah, yeah that's my dad. Did your dad used to say that? Yeah. Now, was, now when I wrote this, I gotta say, I gotta make a shot out here. I was inspired by Walt Disney and Charles Bukowski. <laughs> 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 Thank <laughs> you.